I want to tell you that your $200 monitor can outperform your $2,000 monitor if set up correctly. The biggest mistake most colorists and content creators are making is not because they're not using expensive screens. It's actually the way they're viewing their footage. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be revealing the biggest fatal flaw every beginner has in their setup and how to fix it without breaking your bank. And by the end, you will know that your $200 screen can outperform your $2,000 laptop screen any single day. When I was starting out as a colorist, it was always these little things that held me back. So what I did is I created a tailor made absolutely free over one hour long training that you can watch right after finishing this video. This is based off of your guys' biggest pain points. Everything is trickled into one super concise training. So instead of like spending hours and days just aimlessly clicking through and watching random videos, this will turn you into a color grading ninja in one hour. It comes with free footage so you can actually practice what you've learned in the training and, and, and the best part, I'm gonna be throwing my perfect LUT. It works on every single type of footage. Just name the type of project and you can slap this LUT on and export and you're ready to go. So all of that is included in my free training. Link to that is gonna be in the description. Check it out after you finish watching this video. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, so now I'm inside Resolve on my laptop and I wanna take you through like the first biggest mistake. Right now, we're inside our user interface. The problem with that is when you're grading here, a couple of things. One, the real estate. The screen is so small. Your laptop is already 16 inches and then the screen is like, what? I don't even know, six inches, seven inches that you're looking at. How are you going to grade, right? That's so difficult. But the biggest problem that's happening here is this, this interface. It's dark gray, right? So then anything that you compare it next to, it's going to look way brighter. So you're gonna keep pulling your exposure down because you're gonna try to compensate for that. And that wouldn't happen if it was a full screen dedicated monitor where you were looking at. So now the actual surroundings are dictating what kind of exposure you're going to set, not to mention all these different colors that are so bright hitting you in the eyeball that is also going to dictate how you add or subtract saturation in your final image. And then to top it all off right here, most of the time people are gonna have their laptops set to default. What's wrong with that? There's a lot that is wrong with that, okay? Because like, look at this. First of all, our brightness is set to automatic. Now somebody's gonna say, I never set my brightness to automatic. Well, then you're one of a kind. You're not like everybody else because the whole idea of having a laptop is to basically leave it on default display settings. So then if you're in different environments, it makes those adjustments on the fly. Same thing goes with True Tone, which is Apple's way of saying like, hey, we're gonna give you a proper color temperature. We're gonna color calibrate your screen depending on the environment you're in. And most of the time to their credit, they're not wrong. It does a really good job. So then you would wanna leave that on. And then what about the preset? The preset is right now set to HDR, what they call XDR, but it's P3 1600 nits usually if you're using your SDR display, it's going to be set to 100 nits, 100 versus 1600 nits. So this is so far off from what your mastering monitor should be set as. But again, if you were to set this to SDR, the results are still not going to be desirable. And plus, you won't be able to see anything. It's going to get so dark. It's going to go to 100 nits compared to 1600 nits. So then, what are you gonna do? You're gonna leave it on default. And when you leave all of this on default and you come back out, now, by the way, people that are watching that are from PC, it's gonna be very similar. The things are gonna be called a little different, but it's gonna be very similar ideology, okay? So now we're back inside Resolve and we're looking at this. Besides it looking a little bit brighter, I have to say that it looks very punchy and saturated, almost like I don't need to do anything to it. And that's one of the things that you're gonna constantly deal with because the way it's set up, it's set up for consuming, not for creating content. So it's adding that extra juice. It's basically set to sort of like vivid settings. So now it's just going to mess with your head regardless. So let's just say if I do something like, oh, let's just pull this up a little bit like that and leave my gamma like this. 
And then outside of that, I'm just thinking, dude, it just doesn't need anything. There's so much color. I don't want to add more saturation. I don't want to do anything with other areas in the image. Maybe I can make some creative changes like that. I can make the sky a little bit more cyan, something like that. I can click on her skin. What do I want to do? I want to add maybe a little bit more magenta, something like that to create that color separation. I am purposely not using scopes and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to show you the right way to do it because then we can like really see how close or far we are from like what the ideal setup should be. And maybe we're not going to be that far. Maybe it's going to look okay because my actual environment is pretty good, how everything is set up. But at least now you know if you're not getting the desired results, these are all the issues that you might be facing and that's what's causing it. So then what's the right way to do it? So let me show you that now. We're going to move over to my desktop and I'm going to go ahead and right click right here. Now this screen is set up to Rec. 709 and we're doing the same conversion, Rec. 709 conversion. So Alexa to uh, Rec. 709 right here. And when I look at this, this is already looking so much darker and this is how it should be. It already basically is telling me I need a lot of help. I need a lot more juice. I need a lot more color. I need a lot more pop and it's underexposed. I can just see that, which I couldn't tell looking at my vivid style consumer centric settings over there. But like I said, we never want to grade in our GUI, in our you know graphic user interface, in our actual interface. We want to throw that image to a dedicated screen. Now that dedicated screen does not need to be five grand. It could be just a $200 screen like the one that I'm using right here. I'm going to have a link to that. It's not an affiliate link. I This is just what I'm using, right? So like I just want to show you I want to prove a point to like how easy can it be without even using a really fancy expensive monitor to get color accurate results. So we want to go under workspace. We want to go down to video clean feed and we want to select that monitor. And as soon as we do that, bam, right? Like now the image goes into that monitor, but there's something really strange happening. The biggest misconception is that when you do a video clean feed, Resolve is not applying any operating systems display profile onto your screen. It is. If you want to get a true clean, clean feed, then you have to rely on the hardware rather than the software and use one of these devices, I.O. boxes. And then what they do, they bypass any display profile applied and give you a true clean feed to your external monitor. OK, so how do we bypass that if we're going this way, the software way? There's still a way to do it. And let me just show you. So I'm going to record that bit on my iPhone. So like right now, you can clearly see how much brighter that screen is compared to that screen. OK, and right now my thing is set up to like auto white balance and auto exposure. But still, you can see the difference, how far apart they are. So that is a problem. And to fix that is pretty simple. I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to click on my settings. OK. I'm going to go under menu and you can see that it's set to standard and this is their default vivid style settings where everything is boosted and it's sort of like a wider gamut. We don't want to do that. So we're going to actually go in there. We're going to scroll down and we're going to just set it to Rec. 709. That right there is the saw. So now if I come back and if I just keep it right here and you look at these two screens, now it's a way closer match. And I'm telling you, I'm blown away by how good the results are without spending thousands of dollars getting different hardware calibration software and hardware and then trying that out and try to calibrate your screen or buying tens of thousands of dollars uh, uh, of monitor. I'm not saying that that doesn't matter because this thing right here is 30 grand. But what I'm getting at is once you have your settings properly set up like the way I just did, then we can just go in here and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to grade without using scopes, just focusing on trusting that screen. And right now it's telling me that, dude, this image is just very lifeless. So then I want to put life into it. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to do something like that. And I'm going to go, okay, this now started to look way better. Okay. I'm liking that. And then at that point, I'm still going to do all the other things. So I'm going to click right here. And I'm going to say, let's just move this around until I like where I want to keep it. And now let's just do the same thing with the skin. I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. This is looking way better to me. 
Okay, now it's popping. And now when we look at this to that, there's a massive difference. And that all happened because I'm looking at a dedicated screen without any user interface that is like constantly competing with my image. And then also my display settings are set up for how it's going to be viewed on the other side compared to having it in a completely different color space and then having it projected on in a completely different color space. Of course, those two things are not going to match. So just out of curiosity, what if we actually take the image that I graded on my laptop and throw it in here and try to do some sort of comparison with minimal scopes and just see if they look similar or if there's actually a difference? All right, so let's bring it in. This is the image graded on my laptop and let's pop it open. I mean, come on. So I'm gonna pop open my scope so you guys can like really see what's going on. So let's just bring up the scopes right here. And let's just go to our version graded on our dedicated monitor versus the one graded on our laptop. And you see the difference? I mean, guys, this is everything. This is insane. So like if we go four up and we look at the difference, I mean, we're talking about at least a stop like one full stop and not to mention how lifeless this looks compared to how punchy this looks. And when you guys are watching it, you guys are watching it in sRGB. This is how it should be looking. It shouldn't be looking like this. This is probably looking really dull. But when I was looking at it on my laptop, my eyes were bleeding. It was looking better than this because the color space was so different, how everything was set up, you know, the default color space. And it just tricked me into thinking that everything was looking like this when it actually looked like this. And that is the real problem when you guys, that's the disconnect. When you guys export the video and you look at it and you go, why does it look so awful? Why does it look like what I saw? This is the reason. So there you have it, quick and easy way to get the most out of the equipment that you currently own, or if you have to buy something without breaking your bank, you can end up with results like this. If you enjoy content like this, then do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you will be notified about our future content that we drop. But most importantly, if you are serious about color grading and really wanna step up your grading game, then check out my masterclass, 30 plus hours of content, and just look at the kind of clients that our students are working with after taking Freelance Colorist. If you are a content creator and don't want to become a full-blown colorist, then Kazi's Toolkit is created for you. You can create Hollywood caliber looks within minutes with zero learning curve. Every parameter in there has guardrails, so no matter how much you push it, nothing is going to crack, which is going to encourage you to be more experimental. So check out those products. And for my YouTube fam only, you guys get additional $100 off. I usually put out X amount of coupons every month. So it's first come, first serve. If there are any left, you should take advantage of it. Link to that is in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, fam. Yeah.